My enemies will come in greater numbers if my brothers do not reach me first. I give my life for my sons, gambling everything upon a legend. Peroto Calderon, 1498. Hello, I'm Andrew, and I want to welcome you to Visions of the Past, a podcast all about the lore of Assassin's Creed. This is episode 93, and today we're going to talk about a man we mentioned last week when talking about the Creed, Peroto Calderon. Peroto Calderon isn't widely mentioned within Assassin's Creed, only showing up within the old Facebook game, Assassin's Creed Project Legacy, and was a character that, and I apologize if I pronounce this incorrectly, Koala Lucidalent on Twitter wanted to know more about. Nothing is known about Peroto before his introduction into the Order of Assassins at a young age, and having to recite the creed, receiving a brand on his left finger, and taking a leap of faith in the traditional manner. He grew into an experienced assassin and was eventually tasked to train Francesco Vesselio, who he began to look at as his own son, even though he thought that Francesco was rather frail and a perfectionist. Peroto praised him for being wise beyond his years and taught Francesco as well as he could. In 1498, Peroto was working as a carrier for the Borgia family, allowing for him to spy on Templar activity within Rome. Gathering information from reading the messages that were entrusted to him, sometimes he would even alter these messages. He would eavesdrop on conversations between Pope Alexander VI and his son Cesare Borgia, the Grand Master of the Italian Templars, and the Captain General of the Papal Armies at the time. This allowed for Peroto to discover planned executions and deceptions, all of which he delivered to the Order through Francesco. During his service to the Borgias, he delivered letters to Lucrezia Borgia, the Pope's daughter. One message she delivered caused her to burst into tears, which in turn caused Peroto to pity her especially after hearing the Pope speaking about marrying her off to secure alliances throughout Italy. But over time, he did fall in love with Lucrezia. Because of this, he began taking Lucrezia gifts to gain her favor. Often these gifts were ones he took from assassination targets or items that were meant for the Pope. After some time, the pair began taking walks in the San Sisto Covenant where she was staying after her marriage with Giovanni Sforza was annulled. During these walks, Lucrezia asked about Peroto's adventures as a courier, and the pair often tried to offend each other with the nastiest jokes while they were teasing each other. During this time, Peroto befriended Lucrezia's chamberlain maid, Julia, who gave him a lot of advice, telling him what Lucrezia's favorite foods and gifts were, as well as fussing over his appearance and posture insisting he walk straighter and to stop, quote-unquote, slinking like some shady murderer. Even though Peroto and Lucrezia grew close to each other, they were forced to keep their distance in public because of their different social classes. But that did not keep their relationship from becoming intimate, resulting in a pregnancy for Lucrezia, though it was never confirmed if it was Peroto's or Lucrezia's brother Cesare's child. This pregnancy resulted in the birth of a boy that was malformed and who, according to a doctor, was likely to die within a few days. The news of the child ended up bringing some ill fate to Peroto, though, as he was severely beaten and thrown into jail. He did escape, though, after Julia brought him some lock-picking tools, and after his escape, he picked up the child, the boy, which would eventually become known as Giovanni, and left Rome, knowing he'd never be able to see Lucrezia again. Pope Alexander did find out rather quickly about the escape and sent soldiers after Peroto, who he ambushed just outside of Florence and managed to kill or injure almost all of them. After Peroto's ambush, he headed to Agnadello, knowing that the only thing that could heal Giovanni's deformities was the Shroud of Eden that the assassins had hidden there. When he got there, though, he found the assassins who were there to guard the Shroud stood in his way, forcing Peroto to fight them to get to the Shroud. When he got to the home of Rinaldo Vitturi, the keeper of the shroud and Peroto's friend, he found the shroud and asked to heal his son. Consus, the consciousness within the shroud, refused at first, but after insisting, Peroto felt the life drain from his body and seemingly passed into Giovanni. 
While it appeared that Giovanni was healed, Proto wasn't sure if it was effective or not. But he put the shroud back in its box, and he left. Unfortunately for Peroto, when he left, he found that the assassins deemed him a threat to the order and sent others to eliminate him, including his former apprentice, Francesco Vesselio. After trying to stealthily engage Peroto, a battle broke out. And while Peroto killed more assassins, he refused to attack Francesco, even when Francesco attacked him. And on this day, in March 1498, Peroto Calderon was eventually surrounded and executed for breaking the Assassin's Creed. Proto's legacy is a cautionary tale more than anything, showing how easily love can turn an assassin away from the Creed and what the consequences are of breaking the Creed. It also shows just how strange a piece of Eden can be, but that is shown more in Giovanni's life than in Peroto's, as Giovanni often had dreams of Peroto's memories and mistook them for his own because of what happened with the Shroud. There was also a moment in 1503 where Giovanni had an episode that was similar to the bleeding effect that allowed for Peroto to seemingly speak through Giovanni to forgive Francesco for his part in Peroto's death. I do wish we got more with Peroto's story in something a little more prominent than Project Legacy. While I have nothing against that game, it's currently not able to be played, and even if you hunt out the archives of the stories, it's not something that's going to be front and center within the series. There's a lot of room in his life before he was a courier for the Borgias that I'd love to see. It would make for a perfect way to return to Renaissance Italy without having to return to Ezio Auditore. Speaking of Perotto's role as a Borgia courier, historically when Rodrigo was Pope he had a chamberlain, an officer who managed his household. This man was named either Pedro Caldez or Pedro Calderon, with at least one source naming him Peroto. And in Lucrezia's database entry in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, there is a mention of Pedro Calderon, a chamberlain who Cesare had killed in 1498 for getting too close to Lucrezia. The timing of the release of Project Legacy and Assassin's Creed Brotherhood makes it seem likely that the Peroto that we know about is the same mentioned in the database, meaning that he is based on this historical chamberlain. But what do you think about Peroto Calderon? Let me know over on Twitter at visions underscore AC. And thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love stories about Assassin's Creed lore, please tell your friends and follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform. If you want to support this podcast and help provide for new episodes, I'd love for you to buy me a cup of coffee at bit.ly forward slash visions coffee. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed or topics you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC. Or you can check out my brand new TikTok at Visions of the Past Podcast, and you can find those links in the show notes below. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.